and appropriate to him or her. That the grace of God is free, but the blessings of God are and privileges. The grace, the kindness of God is free, so God graciously reaches out to us. But his blessings are and privileges. So where our sister read, when Jacob was about to die, he called all his children and he looked at how all of them had lived. And then he put that blessings on them. He put the same blessing, how they have lived. He looked at Judah and said, Judah, this is how you've lived. So I put that blessings on you. He looked at Levi and said, this is how you've lived. He looked at Joseph and he said, you are a fruitful vine. So, so he put that blessings on them. So the blessings of God are, are and privileges. Depending on how you've lived. And so this will be our focus. This And once we understand some of these things, then it makes sense to live a very good life. Because then even as we look at the priest, if the priest is called upon to bless you and you don't deserve the blessing, it don't work. So when God sent uh, the prophet Samuel to anoint the, the son of J uh, Jesse, he first saw the first one and said, this is the one, let me anoint him. God said, no, not this one. And then so he, so he had to search for David and anoint him. And because, because David, if you like, deserved to be anointed to be king of Israel. Not the first one, because the first one had not proven himself that way. And this is crucial uh, at this sermon. Once you get it, you don't need to worry. Just live a good life. And that will earn you the privilege of receiving God's blessings. So the grace of God is free. But his blessings are, how do you call it, are earned privileges. So this sermon will encourage all of us to live godly so that we receive God's blessings accordingly. You see, life is tough now. Life is very difficult now. And I always pray that people will live well. And one of the ways to really live well and attract God's blessings is to understand some of these things. The same one also teaches us that the prayer of God's servant will not bring God's blessings upon you if your deeds do not deserve it. So, and ministers who offer promises to people but do not tell them to do good things in life, harm them. So I'm sure we know some prophets and other people, they'll just be saying, God will bless you. Meanwhile, you are not telling the people to live like the way Joseph and Judah and the rest lived. The people are living anyhow, yet you are putting God's blessings on them. And it, it won't work because that is not how God has ordained it. And, and so the text will help us to understand a whole lot of things uh, this afternoon. The grace of God is free, but the blessings of God are and privileges. They are and privileges. I, I know some people want, want, want to live anyhow and still expect good things to follow them. Brothers and sisters, it doesn't work that way. Amen. So our text, Genesis 1, this, sorry, Genesis 49, 1 to 12, and then the 28. At, at, at tells us quite a lot that in terms of the patriarchs, that's the fathers of the human race, so right from Seth and way down to Noah, to Abraham, and then to Jacob, Isaac, we call that period the, the time of the patriarchs. So they were the leaders of the human community. There were no priests, there were no kings, there were nothing like that. In, in those times, the godly fathers also acted as priests. And so our text tells us how Jacob blessed his 12 children. Each received blessings according to how they've lived. And the father saw how they've lived. So that was the blessings he put on them. Amen. And again, we see the same thing in the life of Noah. Noah also blessed his children according to their deeds when it was about to go. And, 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 and Jacob himself and Abraham and Isaac, they all did that. And so how you live tells God that, that, that I deserve these blessings or not. So it's crucial that you are. So when you are living a good life, you are not living for anyone or to God. But, but that is your destiny. That is your life. Hallelujah. 
So let's go to the text, Genesis 49, 1 to 12, and then we will jump to the conclusion of that prayer, verse 29. So Jacob was about to go, I'll start from verse 1. Then Jacob called for his sons and said, Gather around so I can tell you what will happen to you in the days to come. Assemble and listen, sons of Jacob. Listen to your father Israel. So here he was acting as a priest more than the role of a father. So verse 3, he starts with the first one. A Reuben, you are my firstborn, my, my might, the first son of my strength, excelling in honor and excelling in power. If you are firstborn, you are the, the strength of your father and mother. Hallelujah. So you have to be careful. You don't live anyhow. Because if you live anyhow, you've traded your destiny. Now, my response says, turbulent as the waters. Okay, so originally he was very turbulent. You will no longer excel. For you went up unto your father's bed, unto my couch and defiled it. So, so Reuben went to one of Jacob's wife and then had an affair with uh, his father's wife. And so, I mean, the dad saw it, he heard, and he could not beat him, he could not suck him, he could not do anything. So when it was time for blessings, he said, no, Jacob, uh, sorry, Reuben, I can't bless you. That's, That's how he lived his life. Have you seen how it works? So, so the dad watched, and he did not say anything. But when it was time, he said, no, Reuben, this is how you've lived. Therefore, I cannot. And then he comes to Simeon and, and Levi. Uh, uh, they were brothers. They were brothers. So let's see what also he said. Uh, Simeon and Levi are brothers. Their swords are weapons of violence. Let me not enter their council. Let me not join their assembly. For they have killed men in their anger and have strung us in as they pleased. Cursed be their anger so fierce and their fury so cruel. I will scatter them in Jacob and disperse them in Israel. So he saw how Levi and Simeon, his two sons, how they lived. They were always attacking people and killing people and treating the animals anyhow they want. He watched as a dad and he said, Simeon, I don't even want to enter your meetings, your assembly. I don't want it. But that's how you live your life. And then, and then so they were also... Uh, they did not receive the dad's blessing. So try to picture what is going on now. Amen. So, so uh, how have you lived your life? What is the pattern? How, what is the pattern of your life? Is it good and bad, good and bad, or just bad? Or good? How would someone describe the way you've lived? And that was what the dad was doing. He looked at all the 12 uh, sons and he would call this one. And so let's see what he uh, said uh, about Judah, verse 8. Judah, your brothers will praise you. Have you seen that? Your hand will be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's son will bow down to you. Because he saw how Judah lived. Like lion, he crouches and lies down. Like lioness, who dares to arouse, to arouse him? Ten, the scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he to whom it belongs shall come, and the obedience of the nation shall be his. So Christ came from that tribe of Judah, and Christ had a scepter throughout Scripture. Isaiah said it, the book of Revelation said it, that the scepter will not depart from Judah until it belongs to the one uh, whom it was meant to be. That was Christ. So Christ came from that very tribe. And he said, Judah, your brothers will praise you. So the name Judah means praise. And it's interesting that it was only the house of Judah that remained. And Christ came from that house. David came from that house. All the eleven perished. It's all because of how they lived. Very important. Amen. And verse 11 says, He will feather his donkey to a vine, his coat to the choicest branch. 
He will wash his garment in wine, his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes will be darker than wine, his feet whiter than milk. So he put these blessings on Judah. How, how Judah had lived. Say, so your brothers will praise you. So, so the way we live as human beings is very important, but that attracts you know, the corresponding blessings to us. Even if you don't want the blessings, history will tell who you were. When you die, history will say a lot about your life. Yeah, so when we read the book of First and Second Kings, for example, we see how all the kings lived. So this one did that, this one did that, this one. History will bring everything up. And so God bless all of us according to that which we deserve. But how we live is very important. You don't live anyhow. And so he said this to Judah. So it was a prayer of blessings. Now Zebulun will live by the seashore and become a haven for ships. His brother will extend uh, towards Sidon. Perhaps he really uh, uh, liked to maybe work and walk around the seashore. I'm very sure. I'm very sure. 14. Issachar is a raw boned donkey lying down among the sheep. When he sees how good is his resting place and how pleasant his land, he will bend his shoulder to the burden and submit to false labor. So that's what he saw about Issachar. And then he talks about Dan 16. Dan will provide justice for his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Isn't that beautiful? Dan will be a snake by the roadside, a viper along the path that bites the horse's heel so that its rider tumbles backward. That was how he lived. He was very crafty and has a very sneaky way of doing things. And Dan said, Dan, that is you. 18. I look for your deliverance, Lord. 19. God will be attacked by a band of raiders, but he will attack them at their heels. Asher's food will be rich. He will provide delicacies fit for a king. Naphtali is a doe set free that bears beautiful pounds. Pounds. And then Joseph, beautiful. 22. Joseph is a fruitful vine. A fruitful vine near a spring whose branches climb over a wall. And of course, it makes sense for him to say that, right? Because they were all in Egypt having good time because of Joseph. So then Joseph, you are a fruitful vine, so bear fruit. So that people will feed on you. 23. With bitterness, uh, with bitterness, Arches attacked him. They shot at him with hostility. But his bow remained steady. His strong arms stayed limber. Because of the hand of the mighty one of Jacob, because of the shepherd and the rock of Israel, because of your father's God who helps you, because of the Almighty who blesses you with blessings of the skies above, blessings of the deep sp springs below, blessings of the breast and the womb. Your father's blessings are greater than the blessings of the ancient mountains, than the bounty of the age old hills. Let let all this rest on the head of Joseph and on the brow of the prince among his brothers. Amen. All this because while his brothers attacked him, you know that story, they wanted to kill him, they ended up selling him. And he said, Joseph, you have survived because of the gods of God of your fathers. But the Almighty God is with you. That was Joseph's life. And, and then he received the corresponding blessings. Hallelujah. Now he turns to Benjamin. 27. Benjamin is a, a ravenous wolf. In the morning he devours the prey. In the evening he, de he devours the plunder. So that was his work. And then it concludes verse 28. All these are the 12 tribes of Israel. And this is what their father said to them when, he's ble when he blessed them. Giving each the blessing appropriate to him. Hallelujah. Very important. And so, I can conclude here. Uh, the Lord has a lot for us. 
that the way you live will attract the kind of blessings. Amen. Very simple. I, I know these days people want good life. But sometimes when you look at how they live, you have to say, but that, I mean, this, your lifestyle does not match what you desire in life. So there should be at least one to one mapping. The way what you desire must correspond to how you live. Mm. If not, then, yeah, you can have a very good plans and vision and desires, but they won't come to pass because your lifestyle is contrary to that. And, and then and we see the same thing Noah doing for his children. Let's go to Genesis 9, 24. The same thing Noah doing for his children. He called them and then he said, let me bless you. Genesis 9, 24. And the patriarch in those days also acted as priests and they were blessed. They are people. So verse 24 says that when Noah awoke from his wine, Genesis 9, 24. And found out what his youngest son has done to him. He said, Cursed be Canaan, the lowest of slaves, will he be to his brothers. He also said, Praise be to the God of the Lord, the God of Shem. May Canaan be the slave of Shem. May God extend Japheth's territory. May Japheth live in the tent of Shem. And may Canaan be the slave of Japheth. Amen. And it came to pass. So the uh, a Canaan, you know the Canaanites, they have to be ratted out. And then the Ashemites, that's a descendant of Abraham, them they had to inherit. And up to now, the Canaanites are still serving this two uh, big tribe. When you go to chapter 10, it tells you the table of nations and how that tribe or that line prospered so much. Church, that is how God has so ordained his world. But let's look at uh, let's try to define the blessings of God. Okay, so the, the blessings of God in, 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 in contemporary times, people think it's just having money and car and children and that. No, it's more than that. So the blessing, people blessed by God are those who earn the privilege of serving Him. Should I repeat? People blessed by God are those who earn the privilege of serving him. So Judah served God in that through Judah, Christ came and Christ came to save the world. We look at a lot of examples. Now all the rest of the uh, uh, tribe uh, of Israel, they were great, great, great tribes. Right? They did great things, but they never had the privilege to serve the Lord God Almighty. Let me tell you, Satan can bless you with every material thing in the world. Yes? So there are a lot of people, they don't believe in God. But they have every material, what you call material blessings. So then what's the difference between us and them? What's the, what's the point? The blessings of God, those who are blessed by God, are those who have earned the privilege of serving the living God. That is God's. So God chose Abraham. He looked at how he lived and said, the whole world will be blessed through you. So Abraham served God. That's God's question. They earned the privilege of serving the Lord Almighty. So when believers reduce the blessings of God to material things, then because then our faith will not survive at the marketplace. Because when you go to the marketplace, there are other faith groups and even non-believers who are doing so well. But what so distinguishes us from the rest of the world is that we have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus and we are the same seven the living God here on earth and the world to come. Now Paul, in other translations, will, will, will call this the highest calling and the privilege to serve the living God. That man is blessed. That woman is blessed by God. So we will let us see that Levi, later on, was blessed. He turned things around. And then they became, you know, the Levitical priesthood. They inherited it. And God used them. 
a blessed man, blessed woman is that person who has earned the privilege to serve the living God. So when God told Moses, go and bring my people out of uh, Egypt so that they will serve me, so that they will worship me. Hallelujah. That's the key. So when you draw closer to the altar and you have the grace to serve God, to me, that is the deal. You have been blessed. Now, if you understand this very well, you're not afraid. Trade your blessings in the Lord with material things and worldly things. That's the greatest. So we know Genesis 12. Uh, let's look at the saints, for example. Uh, the book of uh, Revelation 1, 4. A, a blessed person is that man, that woman who has earned that privilege to serve the living God. Revelation 1, 4, John telling us something about Christ. This is what he says. Uh, Revelation 1, 4, he says that John to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from among the, the, the ruler of, of, of um, the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father. Have you said that? That he has freed us from our sins and now he has made us to be priests to serve his God and Father. Now, now when we go to heaven, there is nothing like houses. Oh, hallelujah. That's it. There's nothing like cars. There's nothing like bank account. Mm. When we get there, what matters is you being cleansed from your sins and worshiping the Lord God Almighty. That's all. So the true blessing of God comes upon those who have earned the, the, that privilege to serve. Hallelujah. And so try to think this way a little bit. Don't just limit the blessing of God to, you know, sometimes when you do evangelism, people say, oh, but I don't go to church. Look at me. I've had this. I say, you still don't know what you're talking about. See, at this coronavirus pandemic, yeah, people left all kinds of things behind. They didn't even just leave them. They had them. They could not enjoy them. Yes. So you have a very nice car pushed, you know, packed out there. And you can't even go and sit in to, to just a motor a little bit. That tells you that that is nothing. What matters is that your sins are forgiven. You serve the living God. And that is true hope. And, and this afternoon, I just want us to think I start to think this way, the way God presents or explains his blessings to us. Redemption and service to God, they go hand in hand. So don't trade your service to God for anything. It is the greatest honor for, for flesh and blood to serve the living God. Greatest of all the honor. The, uh, 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 I'm sure we know that the devil also gives material blessings, right? But that counts with sorrows. The devil also gives. So sometimes, if, if if the enemy really wants to attack your faith, and you have weak and bad faith, he will still allow you to prosper materially, thinking that you are cool. Yeah. He will allow you to prosper material. Everything will be going on nice and nice. Meanwhile, you are not a, a strong believer, and, and so that can deceive you into thinking that ah, I think I'm even better than those who go to church and pray and do all that. Look at me. I don't go to church. I do I go once a month, but see, I have everything. That is deception. It's just a matter of time for the enemy to take everything. I said this morning, I received a text when we were about to leave home. And of course, that was a typical example where the faith life wasn't taken serious, yet everything seemed to be okay. And now the enemy is pulling everything back and things are falling apart. Apart. Now, the way it is, I, I pray we can repair things. 
but sometimes it's like that. So then we can give you all kinds of children, good cars, money, everything, just to let you even not even to think about the price in church and prayer and fasting. Only for him to take it away from you one day. And so let's 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 think beyond material things. And 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 I also want to say this before we even look at our family uh, our seminar and religion. That see, if you are a believer, right? Are you? If you are Christian, don't trade your faith for anything. Especially those of you who got married because your spouses found you very godly. Yeah, are you here? Found you very godly. Never trade that. If you trade that, you lose everything. Because what attracted you to that man or that woman was your godliness. If you lose that, you 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 lose everything. And Paul in the book of Second Corinthians was telling them, not many of you were wise by the world standard. Not many of you were this. Not many of you were this. And now you are in the Lord and you are everything. If you do that, you've lost everything. And the problem is that the temptation for you to, you know, sometimes your spouse, so let me be blunt here, are we here, yeah? Let me be blunt here because it's sad to witness some of these things. Sometimes your, your spouse may say, oh, you are too holy, you are too holy. My friend, maintain that standard. If you drop it, that's the end of the whole game. Maintain it because that was what attracted him or her to you. And in fact, when we were coming to church, I was like, marriage or faith in God, go to hell, marriage. I take faith in God. If you give me the two options, you know why? If I have faith in God, my wife will always follow me. I will be a wise husband and caring husband. But if I don't have faith in God, I'll be useless, man. I'll take faith in God. And I speak this, it's biblical and it's, it's experiential. You see this every day. Marriage, faith in God. Take faith in God. You get everything back. If you leave faith and follow all kinds of love and all those things, my brother, that's the end of it. Amen. But if you have faith, your spouse will always will see that Godliness in you. Amen. Take this to heart. You will, the, the man will survive to the end. And if you let go your faith in God, I tell you, you lose everything. Now, if you are an unbeliever, it's a different story. But once you've come to Christ, you know, it's just a different environment. Because your blessings itself come from God. Are we, are we here? So it must be in God. Marriage, faith in God, faith in God. But then I can get everything. But if I go for the marriage and leave faith, I only have love, self-control. I won't be that good man. So God first, hallelujah. When we do that, we have the resources to take care of our marriages, our friendships, and all that God gives us. If I went and saw the text this morning, I said, oh my God, what is this? Always God. And let's try to finish a bit. So let's see how to end the blessed privilege of, 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 that, of, that, of that serving God. It's, it's very simple. And let's read this uh, text from Jeremiah 35, 18, 19. And then we will try to define that. How do we end that? It's not too difficult at all. It's not difficult. So there, were, uh, 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 there was a tribe called the Arakabites. I'm sure you've heard about them before. And the whole book of Jeremiah 35 talks about them, the Arakabites. Jeremiah 35, 18 to 19. Then Jeremiah said to the family of the Rechabite, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. You have obeyed the command of your forefather, Jehonadab, and now followed 
all his instructions and have done everything he ordered you. Therefore, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Jehonadab, son of Erechab, uh, will never fail to have a descendant to serve me. So, this particular tribe, their great-grandfather gave them instructions, don't drink wine, don't build houses, live in tents, and, and there's another one, three main things. And from the day that instruction was given up to the day that uh, Jeremiah pronounced this blessing, they had kept that instruction. And God sent Jeremiah to the tribe and said, Jeremiah, go to them. And first, Jeremiah didn't even know why God was sending him. And God said, when you go, serve them wine and see if they will drink. He said that, and the people said, Jeremiah, we don't drink wine. And he said, why? He said, because our great-grandfather told us not to. And so later on, the word of the Lord came to the prophet, and the Lord said, have you seen that tribe? They have obeyed the instructions of their, their great-grandfather. But my people Israel, they have not done that. And therefore, God was so happy with that tribe and said, go and tell them that from today, they will always have someone to serve me. We are talking about the blessings of God. The way we earn it is to live a very good life. Hallelujah. I mean, there's no time for me to split what good life means, but I'm sure you know. That's how we earn it. Good life. So you are the one that you respect people. You are the one that you are kind. You are the one that you treat yourself well. You have to treat yourself well. You are the one that you treat other people well. You are the one that you respect God. You are, you know, just live a good. When I say good life, I don't mean get a nice house and nice cars and nice food. Hallelujah. I mean morally, ethically. Be that man, that woman. Obedient to God. And then, and then the Lord said, this man uh, uh, will never fail to have a descendant to serve. Now, so, so it's very simple if we have to define how to end the blessed privilege of serving God. It's very simple. When you intentionally do good for God or for other people, or for yourself. Are we okay? You are earning your, the privilege to serve or to receive the blessings of God. When you do good to other people, so like Simeon and Levi, their problem was that they were attacking people because they were strong. Amen. Some people, they have, they have how they call it? They are powerful. They, they are strong. They say, little thing, they will beat you. Little they will beat you. <laughs> No, God has given you that strength for something good. Now, Levi and Simeon, they, they, they abuse that, 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 that grace. So when you do good to others, yourself, treat yourself well. And God, you are earning that privilege. That, 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 that God will look at you and say, thank that man, that woman. I want to bless him like Abraham, that he will serve me. Hallelujah. That's all. It's not difficult. It's not difficult. And so it's just through faithfulness in all things will earn you that blessed privilege of serving the Almighty God. Hallelujah. That just be wherever you are, whatever you do, just be faithful. Amen. It's not too difficult at all. I mean, I've been a pastor for 60, 70 years, and I've, I've seen a lot. Just be faithful. and that's God, That will attract blessings from heaven. And the book of 2 Timothy 2, verse 2, Paul was telling Timothy that, Hey, Timothy, and the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, and trust to reliable people, who will also be qualified to teach others. So now look for people who are reliable and give them the gospel so that they can also give it to others. So that's what we are talking about. Amen. Amen. Reliable people. But when you intentionally plan and do evil to God, other people or yourself, 
you deny yourself the privilege of receiving God's blessings. When you plan intentionally, sometimes you can make mistakes, it's fine, but when you know that this is not, and you do it against even yourself, because you must love yourself. And if you cannot love yourself, you can't love another person. You hate people. So you have to love, there are a lot of people, they don't love themselves. If you love yourself, you treat yourself well. I don't mean with good meals. You do things that will help you to do well and have the peace of God. So when you intentionally plan to do things to harm yourself or other people or God, then that is your destiny you are writing, if you like. Are we okay? That's what you, you, you are sowing. It's like the principle of sowing and, 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 and reaping you know, comes in here. And so we read about the sons of uh, Noah, for example. One of them was very, was very sensitive and wise. And then when he saw that his father was naked from uh, drinking, what he did was that he looked for some covering and turned his back. And then he went this way and covered his father's nakedness. But the son, one of the sons, saw the nakedness and was laughing. <laughs> and, then, and, and then he was telling other people, oh, look at my dad, he's drunk and he's naked there. He's not a serious man. Later on, Noah was told. Amen. Later on, uh, uh, Noah was told. And, and so when it was time for Noah to bless them, he said, as for you, this guy, all I know is that you always, yeah, 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 you are like that. And then the other one who, who, who always was doing the right thing said, God bless you, Shem, and your descendants. Hallelujah. It's very simple. So just be a bit more careful the way you live. When you meet people, love them, respect them, uh, and just leave them alone. Because you don't know the trouble they carry. Hallelujah. You don't know the trouble they carry. Everywhere you go, and treat yourself well. And when it comes to the things of God, oh my God, fear God, respect God, and do what He wants you to do. And that's very simple. How to end? Yeah. But let's do how. Let's see how. Even uh, even the man of God, Moses, tried to turn the life of a Reuben around, but it did not work. So, so 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 let's go to the book of uh, uh, Deuteronomy thirty three. So Arubin had received that bad news from his father. So let's go there, Deuteronomy 33. And then you see that, so the descendants of, of Arubin, so uh, by the time of Moses, Arubin was, of course, dead, so he wasn't around, but the descendant. So uh, Moses, the priest, also blessed the children of Israel. Verse 1, Deuteronomy 33. This is the blessing that Moses, the man of God, pronounced on the Israelites before his death. And let's jump to verse 6. Let Reuben live and not die, nor his people be few. Obviously, how the priests wanted to turn things around. So, of course, priests, we, we, we don't curse. That's not our, our, our job. So, he, he was praying that let Reuben live. That he will not die. But his father says something different. Of course, some argue that, that the blessings of the father is more powerful than the blessings of the priest. That's not true. What is true here is that each and everyone receives a blessings appropriate to him or her. And that your own lifestyle determines that. Right? So, uh, you know the story from uh, uh, a first Samuel 16. Someone went to Jesse's son. And then God said, anoint one of them. Someone saw the first son and said, yeah, this is the lost chosen one. God said, I've rejected him. So they had to search for David. So why? David qualified himself. So keep that in mind. So here Moses said, let Reuben live and not die. Now his people will be made feel bad. No, it, it never worked. Because Reuben himself uh, or the descendant of Reuben never demonstrated they never live their life to, de to deserve that blessing. Are we okay here this afternoon? Okay, so your descendant, your line, your tribe, your village, your city, wherever, no matter what happened in the past, 
you have the chance to live to earn your own blessings. Okay. And, and that was the story of Levi. Now the story of Levi. So they turn things around that the, the priesthood now, the Levitical priesthood, they got it. But before, they were not good people. Hallelujah. And, and so let's add a more flesh to this. So let Reuben live and not die was Moses' prayer. But Reuben was disinherited. First Chronicles 5, 1 Chronicles 5.1 Dathan and Abiram, who were Arabianites, went down into went down live into the pit when when they rebelled against the Lord in Numbers 16. And so with time they become they became a very small tribe, and as we speak, we don't even know where they are. We, and so the the prayer are we here? Let's listen to this carefully. The prayer of God's servant will not work if you yourself you don't deserve it. So we have this false prophet who will promise you heaven and a desert. And then they'll take your money, but nothing good will happen. And a lot of Christians love them. But you have to live the life. The end. You yourself. And God, who sees all, will look at you and say, yes, I've got my man, I've got my woman here. But many people live anyhow. And when they need help, they search for God's servants to pray for them, for blessings. But in most cases, nothing happens because their deeds do not deserve God's blessings. That is why the gospel message will teach us to repent and change our ungodly ways to receive God's blessings. Hallelujah. And so, so the book of Mark 1, 14, 15, when Christ announces the gospel, this is what he said. Mark 1, 14, 15, after John was put in, in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Change and believe it. Because the, 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 the blessings have come, but if you don't change, you disqualify yourself to be partakers of the kingdom. Hmm. And so the moment you change, then you qualify yourself. To end it. And church, this is what is missing in today's Christianity. Hallelujah. That they don't know that the grace is free, but the blessings are earned privileges. Therefore, we have to take time and live well. And then God, who sees all, will visit you and your people. That will be independent of the pastor. But because you yourself have lived a worthy life. It's missing today. But we pray for a, a restoration. Hallelujah. And so let's look at the story of Falevi now. How he turned things around. Huh. That tribe, they turned things around. They turned things around. So no matter where you come from, no matter the past, you can turn things around. If you are willing. So the story of Levi, you can turn things around. In the past, Simeon and Levi, we read, were not blessed because of their deeds, right? So they attacked and killed people and animals because they were strong and powerful. Everywhere they would go, they were table. They were just harming people. So they were not blessed. And then the dad saw it and said, you, you can't be blessed. But it turned things around. But the descendant of Levi, so so you are the descendant of whoever, you can turn things around. The descendant of Levi turned things around and inherited God's blessings. This is what happened in the course of time. Levi and uh, Levi changed when he he drew closer to Moses and to the Lord, and in doing so, they reversed the curse which lay upon their tribe and won for themselves the privileged blessings of serving as priests of God. So let's read the account in the book of Exodus 32, 25 to 39. The whole story tells how the people had turned to idol worship when Moses went to the uh, mountain for 40 days of 49. And when Moses came down, he saw the people worshiping idol. And Moses was so angry 
And then he said, whoever is on the Lord's side, come and stand here. And whoever is not on the Lord's side, come and stand here. The tribe of Levi, all of them, they rallied to this side. And Moses said, from today, you are going to serve the Lord forever. And the rest were rebellious and still wanted to worship the idol. But Levi did not. So you can change simple things. They are not, you know, I know this is a prophet will give you water to drink, is it? They will give that. So this Corona, why didn't they distribute that water for people to drink? <laughs> See that they are all liars, isn't it? You see that they are liars. Yeah? Most of them are the first to go for the vaccine. They are liars. They are liars. They'll say if you drink this water, if you wear this ring, if you put this on, on your... This Corona, they should have produced a lot of those water and send all the water, you know, bottles to every nation, yeah? As a cure for, they are liars. They are liars. They are liars. They'll say, you know, I come and get some porridge or holy nonsense, only porridge. What is my holy porridge? <laughs> they are liars. And this corona has exposed through pictures and false proof. I, I want. They are liars. I was expecting them to, to organize big crusade, healing crusade. Yeah. If you are, if you are corona, come. They're all liars. Instead of preaching the gospel for people to repent and come to the Lord, for the Lord to be merciful and to bless and change and heal and deliver, they were just deceiving people. So this corona has really demonstrated to us. Levi so distinguished himself. So verse 25 to 29. I will the Exodus 32, 25, 39. So Moses saw that the people were running wild and that Aaron had let them get out of control and so become a laughing stock to their enemies. So the people were worshipping idols and were drinking and doing all kinds of things. And the enemies of God were watching and said, look at these Christians. Look at what they are doing. Verse 26 says, So he stood at the entrance to the, temp to the camp and said, Whoever is for the Lord, come to me. That's all he said. And all the Levi rallied to him. Then he said to them, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, each man strap a sword to his side, go back and forth through the camp from one end to the other, each killing his brother and friend and neighbor, 28. And the Levi did as Moses commanded that day, about 3,000 of the people died. Then Moses said, you have been set apart to the Lord today, for you were against your own sons and daughters and he has blessed you this day. Hallelujah. And that was it. When the people were misbehaving, the Levites, they rallied to the side of the Lord. And that changed their destiny. So from that day, God said, now the priesthood will be from this family. You can change things around. Change things around. So no matter your tribe, your lineage, your village, your city, you and your people, like Joshua said, can turn things around. And so our sermon is very simple. That everyone receives God's blessings. Appropriate to him or her. Amen. So live well. And the Lord will locate you as some people will say. Live well and you will attract blessings. And it's not difficult. It's, not, it's very easy. Hallelujah. At the workplace, be nice, be fine. In your, in your, in your, I mean, among your friends, be nice and faithful. And in the church, be nice and faithful. That will really uh, earn you that great privilege. Not just to get money or job or wife or husband or children these are just little little blessings if you like 
and that God will call you and will say that come and serve me and that's the greatest honor I meant to serve the living God hallelujah it's the greatest of all and so so we pray the Lord will bless us and and will help us to be a bit more wiser uh, to serve and to do that which will be a blessing so at uh, this ends today's sermon very simple and I pray that all of us in fact I, I can see that I mean a lot of good things you know are about to happen so we must also prepare ourselves hallelujah Amen. so that as we pray to God as we cry to God uh, if he looks at us he'll be so pleased and say yes I've got my people they are ready for the blessings that I have for them. I have for them. Let us be on our feet.